Cheers to all our friends. The search is over. To uh, <laughs> the family members that are in the room right now. Uh, the search for the forest tra fen treasure is over. Do you have a taste for adventure? And by adventure, I mean a decade-long treasure hunt marred by tragedy that may or may not have been a wild goose chase all along? Well, you're in luck. We're about to dive down the rabbit hole that is the search for Fen's gold. It's got all the makings of a classic Indiana Jones tale, an epic riddle, an enigmatic storyteller, a string of missing persons, and a bronze chest packed to the brim with booty, which, spoiler alert, has now been found. Get your hiking boots on and grab a shovel, because we're going treasure hunting, my dudes. Picture this, you've dedicated years of your life dissecting the clues. The spot marked by a big red X is calling your name. You drive out to the Rocky Mountains and start digging until you hit something solid. As you open the chest, its sparkling contents almost blind you. It's just how you imagined. You've done what no one else could. Hold on, let's rewind. If you wanna hear about the treasure, we're gonna have to go back a sec first. It all begins with this guy, Forrest Finn. Back in the day, now 89-year-old Finn was a pilot in the United States Air Force. He reached the rank of major and was even awarded the prestigious Silver Star Medal for his service in the Vietnam War, where he flew 328 combat missions in 365 days. After retiring in 1970, Finn set up the Aerosmith Finn Gallery with his business partner Rex Aerosmith, later becoming the Finn Galleries, which was run by Finn and his wife Peggy. The gallery is located in Santa Fe, New Mexico and sells a bunch of mostly American Indian artifacts, paintings, bronze sculptures, and other Western curios. You name it, they got it. The new business really took off and by the early 80s, it was reported that the gallery was already grossing six million a year. Celebrities and politicians from Robert Redford to Cher and Steve Martin traveled to Santa Fe to peruse and purchase his one-of-a-kind exotic goods. Forrest Finn's fortune was growing, and it was growing fast. Then tragedy struck. In 1988, when Finn was 58 years old, he received the news no one wants to hear. He had kidney cancer, and it was terminal. According to the doctors, he had around a 20% chance of surviving the next three years. Chemo was tough going, a surgery to remove the cancer had already failed, and life was looking pretty bleak. What do you do when you're an eccentric millionaire whose days are suddenly numbered? Hatch a swashbuckling plan to hide your riches in your favorite spot, swallow a bottle of sleeping pills at said spot, and leave behind a string of clues for would-be treasure hunters the world over to search for. That's what, except that's not exactly what happened. Over the next several months, then years, Finn slowly grew stronger until in 1993, he had miraculously beaten the cancer altogether. That's cause for celebration, right? Finn knew that he didn't need to follow through on his last hurrah after all, but he never forgot about his plan, and in 2010, decades after it was first hatched, he decided to finally do something about it. Whew, this is intense. Let's take a breather, shall we? Why not take this opportunity to hit that like and subscribe button? It may not come across buried treasure anytime soon, but there's no greater gift than knowledge, and I can promise you that if you stick around. Check out that bell icon too to make sure you never miss out on content again. All right, now let's get back into it. Sooner or later, you decide, I decided that get the kids off the couch, out of the game room, out into the trees and the mountains, and uh, we have a problem in this country with our youth. We're obese, and we, we we use our little hand machines too much, I think. Finn's brush with death had given him a renewed sense of appreciation for the great outdoors, and he saw the hunt as a way to entice the technology-obsessed younger generation back into the wilderness. His original hope, back in 1988, was also that the promise of buried treasure would inspire people at a time when the world was facing a recession. Because nothing says cheer up, guys, like, I'm so rich that I've hidden millions of dollars of stuff in a box somewhere. Good luck finding it. So he got hold of a 10 by 10 inch ornate bronze chest dating back to the 12th century and filled it with wonders beyond your wildest dreams. The cache of riches included emeralds, rubies, diamonds, and gold bullion he'd collected over the years, as well as two gold nuggets the size of hen's eggs, and an old Navajo bracelet with 22 prehistoric turquoise disc beds inlaid in silver. Then one afternoon, he put the chest in the trunk of his sedan and made two trips of an unknown distance into the Rocky Mountains to stash the bounty away in a spot close to his heart. 
First, he lugged the chest, which apparently weighs some 20 pounds alone, to the hiding spot, then returned to fill it with the loot, amounting to a further 22 pounds. Next, he penned a cryptic 24-line poem, which apparently contained all the clues needed to locate the treasure, which he self-published in the fall of 2010 in a chapter titled Golden Moor from his memoir, The Thrill of the Chase. But more on that later. At last, the stage was set and the hunt was officially on. And boy, did it begin. Fenn claims that a day after the world caught wind of the hunt, he received over 12,000 emails crashing his computer. News coverage came thick and fast, with Fenn's face appearing anywhere from local papers in the Southwest to national TV broadcasts. In the years since, an estimated 350,000 people from all over the world have joined the search, many quitting their jobs and depleting their life savings to fund their newfound hobby. How many trips have both of you made trying to crack this one? It's somewhere in excess of 65 different trips. I've made over 100 trips. At the same time, YouTube shows, online forums, documentaries, and even an entire subreddit popped up online with the sole purpose of unraveling the mystery and obtaining the bragging rights about being the one to finally find Finn's gold. What began as one old man's dying wish to get people off the couch and onto their feet had turned into an overnight phenomenon with the eccentric art dealer as the proverbial Willy Wonka. Considering the contents of the chest alone have been valued at anywhere between one to five million, it's really no surprise that people went crazy over the opportunity to get their hands on it first. Fenn said himself that there's no reason for people to use the internet or social media to find the treasure. In fact, the only tools the hunters would need are their own instincts and, of course, the poem which supposedly contains nine key clues. As I have gone alone in there, and with my treasures bold, I can keep my secret where, and head of riches new and old. Begin it where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. From there, it's no place for the meek. The end is ever drawing nigh. There'll be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads and water high. If you've been wise and found a blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. But tarry scant with marvel gaze, just take the chest and go in peace. So why is it that I must go and leave my trove tro for all to seek? The answers I already know. I've done it tired and now I'm weak. So hear me all and listen good. Your effort will be worth the cold. If you are brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. Before we find out how others have interpreted the poem, what do you make of it all? Are there any interesting observations you can draw from its lines? Why not let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to some of you. I'm genuinely curious. Now where were we? The biggest clue regarding the whereabouts of the elusive treasure is probably that the guy was 79 years old when he hit it. I don't know about you, but I can't see him lugging a 20 pound bronze chest up a mountain or through some treacherous ravine. Then again, the only additional detail Fenn has ever let slip is that the treasure is hidden at least 8.25 miles north of Santa Fe at an elevation of 5,000 feet. So call me a cynic. Either way, the poem is open to interpretation and intrepid explorers have translated various parts to correspond with landmarks across four states, Colorado, New Mexico, Montana, and Wyoming. The whole thing is pretty vague and doesn't give away anything specific, so people have put forward hundreds of ideas about what Finn is actually saying in its six short stanzas. One of the most popular beliefs is that the fifth line, begin it where the warm waters halt, points hunters to a place where their search should begin. The line is considered important because it's the only couplet in the poem that doesn't rhyme. Considering Finn has stated that he agonized over the poem for some 15 years, it seems kind of fishy that he wouldn't choose the word balk, which could be interpreted to mean the basically same thing as halt, while also conveniently rhyming with the word walk in the seventh line. Either that or he just didn't have a thesaurus at hand. For many hunters, like retirees Dale Neitzel and Cynthia Meacham, who have dedicated years of their lives as well as thousands of dollars to the quest, where the warm waters hawk can be interpreted as some kind of hot spring at the end of a stream or river, like the ones found in Yellowstone National Park. This also happens to be a place for spend many summers at as a kid, which has only fueled the fires of the theory. According to Finn, those who have successfully solved the first two clues have come within a couple of hundred feet of the treasure. 
Meanwhile, the line containing what is considered the final clue in the poem, if you've been wise and found the blaze, has often been interpreted to mean a blaze of white, like some large white rock that could be found sticking out of the Yellowstone area, as well as Colorado and New Mexico. And yet Dale and Cynthia, like hundreds of thousands of other hopeful explorers, were still yet to find themselves returning home with the reward in tow after following the so-called clues. There's the problem of ownership to consider if the treasure was found in a national park or on privately owned land. Besides, digging is illegal in Yellowstone National Park, which could also suggest that the chest was never actually buried and remains exposed to the elements. The loot may be nigh on impossible to locate, thanks to the endless possibilities woven into Finn's writing, but all this gallivanting through the wilderness can do no harm, right? Wrong. The saying it's all fun and games until somebody gets hurt has never been truer, and the search for Finn's gold has not been without its perils. In January 2016, 54-year-old Colorado man Randy Bilyeu went missing while hunting for the treasure among the rugged canyons of northern New Mexico. What ensued was a six-month search which concluded when Billy Yu's body was tragically discovered by workers along the Rio Grande. Although an autopsy couldn't confirm the exact cause of his death, it was almost certainly caused by risks taken during his solo quest to uncover the gold. And he's not the only one. Since then, the death toll surrounding the Fen fortune has reached a grand total of five. On June 9, 2017, 53-year-old Jeff Murphy of Batavia, Illinois met an untimely end after falling about 500 feet down a steep slope at Yellowstone Park. Then, when Pastor Paris Williams from Grand Junction, Colorado told family members he was searching for buried treasure but failed to show up to a function on June 14, 2017, they also feared the worst. He too was later found five to seven miles downstream from his parked car along the Rio Grande. 31-year-old Eric Ashby met a similar fate while rafting at Colorado's Arkansas River on July 28, 2017, after moving to the area a year earlier to pursue the treasure. Most recently, on March 21, 2020, 53-year-old Michael Sexton from Deer Trail, Colorado was found dead by rescuers near the Dinosaur National Monument alongside the Utah-Colorado border. Whenever he's been asked about whether he feels at all accountable for the potentially life-threatening wild goose chase he started all those years ago, Finn himself has had little to say on the matter. Although Finn had succeeded in his goal of getting people back into the wilderness, the fact that people were now losing their lives looking for something that may or may not even exist in the first place started to give the whole debacle a slightly bitter taste. In 2017, Pete Cassettis, the chief of New Mexico State Police, publicly implored Forrest Fenn to call off the search, stating that he's putting lives at risk. But it seems the call was made to no avail. You had talked about uh, giving more clues. I'm not going to give a clue to help people find the treasure. I'm going to give a clue to try to keep them out of trouble. And it wasn't just the hunters who were at risk. Finn has confessed to receiving online death threats from enraged searchers, while some have even turned up in his own backyard to dig for the chest. In December 2019, Finn was also slapped with a hefty $1.5 million lawsuit by Colorado man David Harold Hansen of Colorado Springs, who claims that Finn provided him with misleading clues which derailed his successful search for the cache of riches. According to Hansen, the damages cost was based on half the publicized value of the contents of the chest, which is only fair after all. You gotta know your own worth, right? Meanwhile, Randy Bilyeu's ex-wife, Linda, openly stated that she believed Randy had lost his life while chasing what was essentially a hoax, because Finn had provided such vague information about the treasure. And she wasn't the only one. Soon, many had begun to speculate that Finn never carried the treasure into the Rockies in the first place, but simply spun the whole tale as a way to gain publicity for his book. A handful of people close to the eccentric antiques dealer, including friend and ex-CIA operative Valerie Plame, have come forward to defend him by claiming that they had witnessed Finn filling the chest with the treasure before making the trip to hide it back in 2010. Things were heating up, and as the months and years drew on, it seemed more and more likely that the fabled treasure really was some sort of publicity stunt gone wrong. But then, when it was least expected, the internet caught wind of a major development in the tale. Finn's gold had finally been found. On June 6, 2020, Forrest Finn himself posted on the blog Thrill of the Chase to break the news. Although he didn't reveal the specific whereabouts of the bounty, he wrote, It was under a canopy of stars in the lush, forested vegetation of the Rocky Mountains and had not moved from the spot where I hid it more than 10 years ago. I do not know the person who found it, but the poem in my book led him to the precise spot. Short, sweet, and vague as can be. He then went on to congratulate the thousands of people who had taken part in the quest and concluded the message by saying, 
so the search is over. Look for more information and photos in the coming days. If you ask me, that leaves a lot to be desired after an epic 10-year hunt that claimed several lives. And yet, unlucky hunters were left to celebrate or commiserate the end of an era while they basically twiddled their thumbs and awaited further updates. Finn then confirmed that the finder was a man from back east who had sent him a photograph of the chest. According to Finn, he hadn't communicated with the man since 2018 and the lucky finder had decided to keep his identity private. Then on June 16th, Finn released a set of photos on the Thrill of the Chase blog to prove that the treasure was no longer hidden. And one, we can see Finn examining the contents of the chest, likely before filling it back in 2010, while another shows Finn wearing the Navajo bracelet he mentioned placing inside. The final photo shows the muddied chest itself sitting in a weathered condition implicitly on or near the site where it was found, piled high with gold coins and nuggets, various unidentified artifacts, and a rusted key. Sure, these photos prove that the treasure does exist, but the fact that the bounty has really been hidden in plain sight for the past decade is a whole other kettle of fish. In fact, the news has only bolstered the theory that the treasure hunt was a hoax all along. Given the lack of details surrounding the find, it seems totally plausible that either A, Finn never hid the chest and went out to stage the shots himself, or B, Finn did hide the chest but decided to drive out to the spot and unearth the treasure to make it look like somebody had finally solved the puzzle. After all, is it just a coincidence that the hunt has come to an end a decade after it began? Linda Bilyeu is among those who still believes that the whole thing is made up, telling Westward.com on June 8th, I believe he never hid the treasure. He needed attention, and this is how he got it. Others who poured their time, energy, and money into joining the search have also expressed frustration with its sudden end. Among them is Cynthia Meacham, who has begged Finn for some pointers about how close she and others were to finding it, admitting, I have no closure at this point. There's no telling when or even if Finn will clarify the details of the find. There have been no updates on his website, and the so-called Thrill of the Chase Facebook page hasn't seen a new post since 2018. For now, Forrest Finn is still exercising his right to remain silent. Perhaps the lucky man who found the chest will come out of the shadows to explain the whole thing. Maybe as Linda Bilyeu had suggested, Finn will just start another hunt to satisfy his need to inspire adventure. For now though, it seems that this modern day treasure hunt is far from solved. What do you make of the hunt for Finn's gold? All a hoax or a closed case? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're not quite done satisfying your curiosity, why not check out this video? It's all about internet mysteries that'll send you down the rabbit hole. Go on, there's always time for one more. Thanks for watching.